Now, based on what you've learned, use these four steps that were discussed in the first video to solve this problem, then restart the video to check your answer. Feel free to use parts of the video as hints whenever you get stuck. So first we'll have to calculate the total resistance and in this case we only have two junctions which together form a single loop and to get the resistance of that we'll first have to get the resistance of the blue branch which is just the sum of the resistance of these two resistors inside it so three and then for the yellow same thing, 5 plus 1, so 6 ohms. Then we can get the resistance of the loop using the resistance of the two branches, so 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6, which is going to be 3 over 6. So the resistance of the loop is just 2 ohms. And then that means that this whole loop can be replaced by a resistor with resistance of 2 ohms and then we won't be left with any more junctions so we can get the total resistance by just adding the resistance of the loop and the 4 ohm resistor to get 6 ohms. And the next step is to calculate the total current, and we can do that using the equation V is equal to IR. So the total current is just going to be the total voltage over the total resistance, and we are given the total voltage, and we calculated the total resistance. So that's just going to be 12 over 6, so the total current is 2 amps. Now in the third step, we have to calculate the voltage and current of individual components. And in this case, we only care about the 2 ohm resistance. So to calculate its voltage and current, we'll have to walk back through the steps that we took to calculate the total resistance. So the last step was calculating the total resistance. Then we calculated the resistance of the loop. Then we calculated the resistance of the yellow branch, and finally we calculated the resistance of the blue branch. So moving from total back, we get to the resistance of a resistor that can replace the whole loop. And in that situation, really, there's just going to be one resistor replacing the whole loop and that resistor is in series with this 4 ohm resistor here so that means that the current of the loop or the resistor that's replacing the loop is just the same as the total current which is 2 amps and then we can use V is equal to IR to get the voltage which is just 2 times the resistance of the loop which is 2 ohms from our previous calculations so the voltage is 4 volts. Then we move one step back and we get to the yellow branch, but we don't care about that one because the 2 ohm resistor is in the blue branch, so we can move one other step back to the calculations for the resistance of the blue branch. Now the blue branch is parallel to the yellow branch inside the loop, so we know that the voltage of the blue branch has to be the same as the voltage drop across the whole loop, so that's just going to be 4 volts and then using V is equal to IR we can get the current as well which is just 4 over the resistance of the blue branch which is 3. So 4 over 3 amps. Then we can move further in to look at the individual resistors inside the branch and we only care about the 2 ohm resistor and uh, since there aren't any other branches inside the blue branch that means that the current throughout the branch is the same so the current across the 2 ohm resistor is also just 4 over 3 amps. And then based on V is equal to IR its voltage is 4 over 3 times 2, so 8 over 3 volts. The last thing we have to do is calculate the power, and for that we can just use the formula P is equal to IV, and we have the current is 
4 over 3, and the voltage is 8 over 3. So the power is just going to be 32 over 9 watts. And that's the power dissipated at the 2 ohm resistor.